campaign to make a beautiful, clean Dallas continues. There's a lot of action going on this weekend by people who care on neighborhood streets and shopping centers and even underwater. Here at White Rock Lake, where the water is so polluted that people can't even swim in it, scuba divers are fishing in the murky depths for debris that's been tossed away. Near downtown, kids from the Dallas Association for Retarded Children are cleaning up this area just off Harry Hines. There are 200 DARC children in all, and this scene is repeated all over the city. Here at Moore Park in Oak Cliff, crews from the Sierra Club and several high school ecology clubs have the help of a winch truck. They need it to pull out everything from cash registers to refrigerators from the creek. There's no accurate count of the numbers of people that are participating in making a be beautiful, clean Dallas, but you don't have to sign up. You just have to care. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Judy Hanna. Last Saturday night, security officer Odell Miles was shot as he attempted to prevent an armed robbery at a Forest Avenue grocery store. The 36-year-old man is being buried today as a result of that attempt. Officer Miles had worked for 18 months for Metropolitan Detective and Security Agency under Captain Ray Franklin. Captain Franklin, what happened last Saturday night? Well, at uh, Forest Avenue uh, A&P grocery store, Officer Miles was on duty, uh, and uh, two men came in to uh, commit an armed robbery. And uh, Officer Miles was there trying to apprehend one man, not knowing that there were two men in the store. This is when he was shot by the second man. Is there a trust fund set up for his family? Yes, there is a trust fund set up. Uh, Mr. Pettis Norman, of, uh, Vice President of South Oak Cliff Bank, and Dr. Emmett Comrade, uh, Reverend Peter Johnson, and Mr. George Holland from Operation Breadbasket. These men have uh, gotten together with me and uh, set up this trust fund. Anyone wishing to contribute to this trust fund can call Mr. Pettis Norman at South Oak Cliff Bank uh, anytime during uh, bank hours.
On the early news this evening, we made, I'm afraid, a feeble attempt at straightening out the daylight saving time question as to whether or not at 2 o'clock in the morning you set your clock to 1 o'clock or 3 o'clock. In other words, in trying to determine in which way would you gain another hour of daylight or lose an hour of darkness, whichever way you want to look at it. And in order to, to try to straighten out this, this annual problem, we, of course, have come to the TikTok clock shop in East Dallas, and we quickly found that because of the, the great number of clocks here, it was a physical impossibility because all of them are reflecting a variety of times, and no matter which way you move any one of these clocks, no matter what happens at 3 o'clock in the morning, none of them will say 3 o'clock. So once again, we're going to rely on J. Lewis in Fort Worth. He, he, I'm afraid, did not have the answer to the problem on the early news this evening, but we do think that J. now has it worked out. J. Lewis in Fort Worth. I... Uh, J. Lewis in Fort Worth doesn't have it worked out. But at any rate, at 2 o'clock in the morning, either this clock at 1 o'clock or this clock at 3 o'clock will be right. But I don't know which one. Del Miles is survived by his wife, Selma, and nine children, all at the age of 16. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Judy Hayes. Although control of the Dallas Independent School District hangs in the balance, apparently only one out of nine persons in the Dallas Independent School District care. That's the ratio thus far of people voting. We're at North Dallas High School at Haskell and McKinney, where Mrs. Lorena Allman, the election judge, tells us that turnout today is about average. How many have voted thus far, Mrs. Allman? Four to nine have voted up till now. How many are in this precinct? 913. So approximately one out of nine thus far. That's right. Uh -huh. Is this normal for this precinct? It is. For this kind of an election, yes. So what it all boils down to is whether it's the school board runoff or a general election in this particular district, you have one out of nine voting. That's eight out of nine persons with a great deal of apathy to live with. They said the biggest crowd today was when the three of us walked in to film this report. This is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. Well, it's that time of year again. It's spring, and it's time to go on Central Daylight Savings Time. And what better place to talk about changing your clock than a place like TikTok Clock Shop on Garland Road? Someone is going to be quite busy here in the next few hours, changing all the multitude of clocks to Daylight Savings Time. But once and for all, we're going to... What's it to you, fella? But once and for all, we're going to set the record straight. We're going to straighten it out in your mind exactly what happens in order to gain this extra hour of daylight. Now, in order to gain an extra hour of daylight, at 2 o'clock in the morning, you'll set your clock back to 1 o'clock. This will thus add another hour. Now, I believe that would be to 3 o'clock because 
uh, at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening, when it would normally get dark, you want it to be 8 o'clock in order to get another hour of daylight. So you would set your clock forward to 3 o'clock. I'll tell you what, we can best, if we can find a clock around here, let's take, well, let's see how would this work. We'll, we'll look at it scientifically. Would you get, uh, hey, would you get an extra hour if you run it to three o'clock or, or back to one o'clock? Which way is it? Uh, you don't know either. How about over in Fort Worth? J. Lewis? You don't know either? We'll be back at 10 o'clock and we're going to have this problem worked out. Okay? All right. See you then, Jay. Thank <laughs> you.